Welcome back to the Nine Cave and welcome to part two of the Ravel 24 scale Jordan 197. So the keen eyed amongst you will notice I'm sat in exactly the same place wearing exactly the same clothes as I was in part one. That's because I'm recording part two exactly the same time as part one because uh, most of the video editing is done for part two uh, when I did part one. So I thought I might as well record the intro and outro for part two as well and get everything done in one go. So both videos will pretty much be out there within the space of a week. So part one's probably been out by now for probably about a week. Uh, so yeah, so we're into part two. So you obviously, if you recall part one from a week ago, probably, give or take, uh, covered the prep of the body paint prime paint decal 2k that kind of stuff so this part's going to get pretty much everything else done uh so that's stuff like painting up the engine running gear wheels uh more decal work on the wheels and tires uh, a little bit of assembly work on the engine and then final assembly of the overall kit itself and then done and dusted so another short video uh, covering the build process but then it's a simple kit it's kind of close to curbside for a formula one kit because none of the rear hatch opens so none of the engine detail is visible anyway so so there we go so that's going to be covered in part two so once again if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and for everyone out there please smash the like button as well it would be greatly appreciated so yeah i'm not going to ramble on for much longer so let's go straight on over to me on the bench for part two. Let's go. So it's now on to all the things. Uh, so Brenda rear end of the car, the engine, uh, transmission area, uh, usual process, removing them from the sprue, collecting all the parts together. Now, even though there is an engine here, it's it's barely visible. Uh, the rear cover doesn't come off the car anyway, so it's not really going to be seen. So it's it's given a little bit of attention, as is usual, a little bit of cleanup uh, in and around the brakes as well, although they are pretty invisible behind the wheels on this car, but not completely, so they need a little bit of attention. And any obvious seam lines are cleaned up with the use of some uh, UMP thinny sticks. So the assembly at the rear is, is reasonably complex. There are a few parts to go together. Uh, Ravel fitting is not entirely clear, as is often the case. But a bit of patience, a little bit of dry fitting. Just check everything lines up correctly. And the two halves of the engine can be glued together with some Tamiya extra thin cement. So just running around the joint and the capillary action will take care of everything else. So I do think this is my slightly hotter mix of Tamiya Extra Thin. So it's mixed 50-50 with EMA Plasti Weld, which makes it a little bit hotter, uh, which tends to seal things a little bit quicker, I find. Now, the floor pan itself, there is a seam line on the, the side of the floor pan. So that's going to be cleaned up with some thinny sticks as well. So once all those parts have been cleaned up, uh, cleaned up and mounted appropriately. It's time to go to the spray booth and get some primer down. So the wheels are done at this stage as well. So they're primed in UMB black, uh, as is pretty much all the kind of engine and running gear and floor pan. And we also prime uh, the seat part that we removed in part one. The engine and rear transmission assembly had, do have quite a few awkward angles. Uh, so you want to make sure you work your way around uh, all kind of sides of the components from all different angles. Make sure you get in around any of the areas, particularly around the suspension wishbones, because they will be a little bit more visible uh, at the back of the car. Uh, floor pan also gets a coat of UMP black primer. In fact, I think everything gets pretty much two or three coats. 
Now, once that primer has a chance to cure, particularly on the exhausts, uh, it's time to put down some of the metallic colours. So the exhausts, I think I've done them in Alclad Pale Burnt Metal, I think, from recollection. Uh, seemed like a nice exhaust colour for a Formula 1 exhaust, which are normally made of Inconel. So those parts can be set aside uh, once the engine and transmission have cured. I've just left them in UMP black primer and there's a little bit of detail paint that I want to do in and around some of the suspension components. So it's a case of getting out a fine brush. Uh, and as you can see, I've got my optical aid on. Just give me a little bit of magnification so I can see some of the bolt heads, uh, some of the representation of the springs, even though Pretty much none of this will be visible once the assembly is done. Uh, but it's a little bit of a I know it's done type job. But I'm not giving it too much attention. Hence it's just going to be brush painted. So uh, engine intakes, they're getting brush painted as well. Using a little bit of Ravel, Ravel Aqua Silver, I think this is. So it's a case of just carefully working around with a very fine brush. I'm using brushes by Army Painter, which I actually find quite good. They hold a good point, they hold a good amount of paint, and they clean up pretty well with the acrylics as well. So I do like them as brushes. They're not the cheapest, but then they're not the most expensive either. So I've moved on to a slightly bigger brush uh, to basically paint uh, the engine block. But once again, very, very little of this is going to be visible once uh, the rear cover, well, once actually the bodywork goes onto the floor pan. There's also a couple of decals which go on the top of the engine uh, for the manufacturer's markings, in this case Peugeot. But as I said a couple of times, pretty much all of this is invisible uh, once the assembly is complete. So. The seat itself, uh, I've gone for a little bit of a cop out. I had no spare 20 fourth scale buckles. Uh, so basically all I've done is I've laid some ribbon down over the raised detail on the seats. And in a couple of areas just painted uh, silver over where the buckles are represented on the molded kit. So I've left the harness short of where the buckles are shown. Uh, just attach them using some CA glue and then trim them in place. And a little bit of detail painting just gives them enough of a representation. It's a little bit of a cop out. It would have been nicer to use proper photo etch kit, but I'd no spare 24 scale ones. So how's ever, that's, uh, that's what I did. So I can carry on with the rest of the construction of the uh, the driver's seat and uh, cockpit area. So once that's on, it can be set aside. Uh, I can move on to applying the decals onto the wheels. So the wheels have been given a coat of X18 semi-gloss black. Just gives them a little bit of a, a sheen to them. And once that's fully cured, uh, these decals for the wheel manufacturers can go down. Uh, surprisingly, they are actually a really good fit. Uh, and they do curve around into the kind of angled uh, rim of the wheel very, very well. So once they've been done and completely dried, uh, they can be assembled into the respective tires. Now, the tires on this kit are probably the poorest part. They are very, very misshapen in a few places. It's quite noticeable, although that kind of element of misshapen might help get the the right height correct, because uh, these Ravel kits uh, can have issues in that area. But how's ever, the wheels just pop into the tires, as simple as that. And they generally do look the part. So once they're popped in, there are then decals for the tire manufacturer. So they are Goodyear, Goodyear Eagle, 
tire decals. Uh, so there's two on each side of each tire. Uh, unlike the Tamiya kits, which have the kind of reverse decal for the tire logos, these are just standard decals from Ravel. But they go down fine. Uh, the carrier film is it's a little bit visible, but not too visible. I mean, you you could go back over with a varnish coat as well, just to, to kind of dull down any of, the, any of the carrier film if necessary. But they kind of looked okay once they went on, so I was reasonably happy with that. But again, it's just a normal deckling process uh, using some warm water and some UMP decal solutions. And just rolling a cotton bud across to basically expel any trapped water from under the, underneath the decal. And then apply some decal solutions on top. So once I did some dry fitting of the the floor pan to body. There's a couple of areas at the back of the floor pan which will be quite visible. Uh, so these are going to get some carbon fiber decals uh, just to add a little bit more kind of realistic detail. So I've not, I'm not putting much carbon fiber around the rear suspension because most of it is quite well hidden by the, the, the tail end of the body and the rear wing. But in or in the floor pan, it's a little bit more visible. So I'm using some uh, Tamiya carbon fiber decal film. And just trimming it to an approximate shape. And then using some decal solutions and a silicon tipped brush. Just to work that into place, work it into any of the recesses. I do find the Tamiya carbon fiber decal film does actually conform very, very well. It responds extremely well to... UMB decal solutions and it will sit down very very well a little bit of heat can help but once dry they'll fit snugly uh, onto the surface so that's done on a couple of areas around the the back of the floor pan and also in and around the diffuser Now, some of the decals from the side pods extended below the body. Uh, so they were cut up earlier with the sponsor's logos that sit on the bottom of the floor pan left separate. These now can be added because uh, I'm at the final process of the floor pan. So for the front lower and upper wishbones, I am going to use some carbon fiber decals because that area is a little bit more visible. They are quite uh quite wide in terms of their size so it'd be hard to get away with them just in black uh, so again i'm using some of the tamiya carbon fiber decal film which will add a little bit more of a kind of realistic finish to them so it's just a case of cutting out some strips carefully placing them and using the decal solutions to help soften them and work them around and they will curve around pretty well. Any kind of seam lines on them will be invisible anyway, because they'll be on the underside. So this is done all the way around the lower and upper wishbones on the front. And overall just adds uh, a much more realistic finish to those wishbones. So as you can see, it's all starting to come together now. Uh, now I'm going to assemble the engine into the floor pan uh, using some strategically placed 2P coins. So that's basically to keep the, the brake discs level, which will hopefully help level the rear wheels correctly because there's a bit of, little bit of slop in the, the fitting of the engine to the floor pan. So that seat assembly. That was kept separate, or well, was cut out separately in part one. That can now be fitted back in with the seat and the steering wheel all in situ. I'm just running some CA glue along the join. And that will essentially be completely invisible once it's fitted. So a couple of dabs of CA glue on the locating points.
just make sure uh, there's not too much there because as soon as you attach two points that can squeeze out and you don't want to get any CA glue on that 2K finish. So I did say in part one that there was probably a little bit of polishing to do. It was very minimal, so I've chosen to leave it out of this video. Very minimal polishing. So that bodywork is already all polished and ready to go. There's the final few parts on the front wishbones, there's the front barge boards to go on. Uh, so these were also painted in the Jordan Yellow from Zero Paint and 2K as well. So they fit across the wishbones and attach on the underside. Can then add the front hubs between the respective wishbones. Now it's non-movable steering on this kit, which is absolutely fine. That's less parts to go wrong or less parts to poorly fit with this kit. Although saying that, it's generally been okay. So now, as you can see, we've got all the brake discs and hubs in place. The individual wheels can be assembled, so they're push fit over the little plastic tabs that are on the brake discs. The fit is a little bit loose. There's, there's a lot of slop and wobble in those wheels, but I think that amount of kind of slop kind of helps make sure that it sits nicely and square on all four wheels. But it does seem to sit quite nicely. So front wing can be added. A couple of dabs of CA glue. And that attaches from the underside as shown. Again, need to make sure that it's uh, it's aligned with the rest of the car. And similarly for the rear wing, with a couple of dabs of CA glue at the locating points. And that slots in. And as you can kind of see here, all of that rear suspension, and the engine detail is all almost completely covered. So with that done, uh, the kit is complete. So uh, let's... Go and have a look at the final photos of this finished kit. This uh, 24 scale Jordan 197 from Ravel. So the Jordan cars back in this particular time period were, were stunning looking cars. Uh, some very creative liveries produced. One thing I was a little bit disappointed with is uh, I didn't get any Benson Hedges decals for it. They are uh, very hard to find for this out of production kit. But however, very pleased with the overall finish. Uh, I guess my fears about the kit weren't uh, made me have low expectations. I'm very happy with the final product. So uh, let's go back to me for the final thoughts. So there we have it. That's uh, part two done. That's the build done. That's the... 24 scale Ravel Jordan 197 completed. My thoughts on the kit. Not as bad as I feared. I think a few people had uh, had mentioned it had difficulty with generally Ravel Formula 1 kits, the 24 scale kits. Uh, given its age, I was a little bit hesitant and nervous about the decals they went on fine 2k went on fine and then the main issue i thought i was going to face with the assembly is because it's so simplified and because Ravel kits tend to be a little bit vague in their you know location points for parts i thought alignment would be a bit of an issue but it wasn't everything went together reasonably well i think the only problem area was actually the tires themselves they were a little bit misshapen yeah, I've kind of had to pose the wheels a little bit just to make the misshapenness of the tyres less obvious. But I think I've gotten away with it. And hopefully you agree with the, the photos uh, that I've shown just at the end of the, the video sequence. So, so yeah. So, as a Jordan fan, I'm really happy to have it there. The keen-eyed amongst you might spot a couple of 
die cast Jordan cars uh, on a shelf behind me. Uh, so yes, it was nice to have the 197 built and uh, that will show pride of place in amongst the collection. So yeah, happy with the outcome. Kind of looking forward to building the other Ravel Jordan kit, which is the EJ10 at some point. Yeah, that'll be interesting as well. I look forward to that. But how's ever for this video, we're done. So thank you all for watching. If you're not a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe. And for anyone watching, please hit the like button. And anyone's got a question or query or a comment, leave it below in the comments field. And once again, I thank you all for sitting here and putting up with me. And I'll see you all very, very soon uh, in a video coming to the channel at some point. Don't know which one, but it'll be hopefully coming soon. So thanks again and bye bye for now. Bye-bye.